Good morning all. In the previous video, we had started off with the fourth module and we had discussed what shallow foundations in brief means, plus we had discussed what strip footing is, what isolated combined footing is, what raft foundation is, etc. And we had briefly gone through the choice of rectangular combined footing and trapezoidal combined footing based on various parameters into consideration. Now, in this particular video, we'll try to discuss the design of a rectangular combined footing. Now, when we talk about design, let's not get confused with the structural design. We are interested in the geotechnical design of this rectangular combined footing where we finalize the length, the breadth, etc. The geometrical parameters such that the soil beneath that is safe in bearing capacity. Now, while you are in a design office, this is perhaps one of the basic steps to arrive at the length and the breadth based on the soil test and the recommended soil capacity. So once you arrive at the, at, at the length and the breadth, you will communicate this design to the structural engineer who will calculate the loads coming over it, the stress distribution and, 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 and design the slab and the pillars based on, on the soil pressure and the superstructure load. So our job is now to give the structural engineer the preliminary data on what the length and the breadth of the rectangular combined footing should be. Now for which I've taken a case of a rectangular combined footing which I've drawn using my laptop. So uh, excuse me the unprofessional drawings that I display here. I have an unknown length and an unknown breadth B rectangular in plan and that rectangular combined footing houses two pillars columns one column has got a dimension of b1 b1 of course square plan another column has got b2 b2 another square pillar or column and b1 b1 which is a column number one has a load of q1 point load acting on it through its center of gravity which i've marked as a dotted line here likewise you have another column column number two let's say whose dimension is b2 by b2 and it carries a load of q2 point load again through the center of gravity of that column now if q2 plus q1 is what we call as the total load q and it of course is acting vertically downward but what i've marked in this particular figure is its reaction or the soil reaction offered onto the rectangular combined footing slab due to q1 and q2 so of course the reaction is against the direction of the force so q is marked as upward don't get confused q the magnitude is just q2 plus q1 x2 capital x2 is a distance between the points of action of q1 and q2 so that is about the figure and in the previous video we had discussed that the choice of the rectangular combined footing is when Q2 in this figure is greater than Q1 or we have the option to extend the slab on the heavier side of the column. The first step to design here is to find the total load Q. So in the question or for exam point of view in the question Q1 and Q2 will be given. Your first task is to get total load Q and the question also give us data on soil bearing capacity as BC the safe bearing capacity of the soil which we estimate from the foundation recommendation the soil test etc and based on Q the total load and safe bearing capacity as BC we arrive at the required area which means what could be the length by breadth area that will safely carry total load Q such that the net pressure at the bottom of the slab is less than safe bearing capacity. For example, let's take an example where total load Q is 100 kN and the safe bearing capacity is, let's say again, 50 kPa kN per meter square. So 100 by an area of 3 will give you a value of 33 kPa, which is less than safe bearing capacity. In short, when you have the total load Q100, 
divided by an area 3 meter square that value is lesser than the SBC safe bearing capacity of 50 kilonewton per meter square that is a brief idea quoting an example now our idea to design the footing is such that yeah I have a figure which you will probably uh, relate to we have all done this during our class hours right we have all tried to manage the books on one finger that principle gets applied here our intention is to make sure that the Q is passing through the centroid of this slab now the centroid of the slab of course includes Q2 and Q1 they are the loads coming over it in, in addition to the weight of the slab so our intention is to balance the Q at the point which is the centroid in short, the distance to the right side of Q and the left side of Q should be equal for a rectangular footing. So once you have arrived at total load Q and area required, what you do is you locate the line of action of Q analogous to the line of action of your finger while trying to balance your books using this equation q into x bar is equal to q2 into x2 what you've done is what you've done is just take the moment with respect to uh, uh, a centroid in this case you take the moment with respect to uh, the centroid of this column so uh, of course q1 passes through that centroid so you can avoid that since the leverage moment is zero and q multiplied by x2 is equal to, I'm sorry Q multiplied by X bar is equal to Q2 multiplied by X2 so that is the equation I've written here taking the moments with respect to this point in short X bar is equal to Q2 X2 by Q where X bar is the distance of the resultant of the forces from the center of this column so in the third step now you have arrived at X bar Next is to determine the length of the footing L considering the center to center distance of the column, projection available beyond the column and width of the column. In short, length L is equal to X bar plus B1 by 2 into 2 or X bar should pass through the center of the rectangle so whatever distance you have to the left side of a left side of Q should also be to the right side of Q so left side of you less side I and mean, left side of Q is already known X bar you have the value of X bar is known to you so add value of X bar to B1 by 2 then multiply by 2 so that should be the least value to be given for the length if you give a greater value that's fine because higher the value lesser will be the pressure beneath the footing safer will be the footing but you have to compromise on the economy so uh, once you have arrived at X bar and you can estimate the length the least length required for the footing you can estimate the breadth because you already know the area required and you already know the length so divide the area by the length and you get the breadth so uh, the next one is just to have a round of figure let's say for example the length that you have calculated tends out to be uh, 10.7 meters you can provide a length of 11 meter and round off the figures for the breadth b as well so multiply those breadths and lengths b and l to get the area provided so earlier you had the area, area required now you have got the area provided so based on the area provided, make a final check whether Q is, is, is less than or equal to total load by area, by which you are ensuring that the, uh, the load taken is safely transferred to the soil without bearing capacity failure.